That's, that's one of the biggest struggles that you and I see is people wanting to get into live streaming. It's also kind of the low hanging fruit. If you're not doing it, I, I think you should. There's an expectation culturally that people are gonna be able to go and they're gonna be able to find something now. I think when it comes to the, the ways to uh, take advantage of video, probably the most obvious thing that any church could do, I think, would be to add live streaming to their ministry. I mean, that's kind of, that's that's one of the biggest struggles that you and I see is people wanting to get into live streaming. It's also kind of the low hanging fruit, I think, because it's so commonplace nowadays that if you're not doing it, I, I think you should. Yeah, w when it comes down to the, the live stream concept, there's there's some mixed philosophies and I, and I understand, I actually really understand and respect uh, the different sides of the conversation but what it comes down to is um well, this is a post-covid world uh it wasn't like this before covid but now people expect that when they're out of town or when they're homesick or you know home with a sick kid or whatever that they're going to be able to pick up and engage in that service and i know like when i go on vacation there's a place we go that's kind of remote sometimes just my wife and i to spend time together and what happens for us is we get there and we're not on a sunday morning we're not packing up and driving 45 minutes into town to a church we do choose to to pull up our service and uh engage in that way now i don't believe that's a good way to do every week um, so I do think there's a danger of any kind of broadcast related thing that tells people it's okay not to come to church. But what a live stream does is it puts things up at your normal church time, allows people to engage if they've got sick kids at home or if they're not well themselves or they're out of town or whatever, something's going on that keeps them from making it to church that day. But then it also provides you with more, you know, long since out there things that you're going to be able to use to engage people. Uh, it gives you content to start with, uh, and I think both of those things are actually really, really important. Right. Uh, the, the the way I, I look at it is you're already doing this, right? So you're you're doing a, and, and we can get into the, uh, the the real world analogs, but one of the things that everybody is or, or a church is doing when you step back from the um, from from the from the spiritual aspect of it, and you just look at it from a technical standpoint. You're doing a live event every single week, and you've got a keynote speaker, and you've got a little mini concert that happens beforehand. You've got all these things that are going on. So turning on a camera, if nothing else, just turning on a camera and capturing it is a great place to start. Actually working towards um, a, a more polished, uh, a more on-purpose type of a production for it um, will give the viewer a much better experience. But you're creating this content already, capturing it, so that you can repurpose it later is uh, is basically is the lowest of the of the low hanging fruit I think um, because what you can do is you can trim your video just if you look at YouTube alone you can after in fact after this video is uh, this this live stream is done I am going to go and cut off the the video part at the beginning where we were just sort of bantering back and forth while I was getting a few things ready for the show and we were just saying hi to everybody and I'm going to cut the stuff off at the end where we answer some questions and things like that and a version of this live stream is going to be put into our our videos and it's just going to be from the time that I say hey welcome to the show to the time that we say goodbye you can do that with your live streams at church that gives you two pieces of content that gives you the actual full live service and then if you just went and trimmed out just the sermon you now have something else on your your channel that you can provide as an archive as a bible study aid you can take your sermons uh, if you're doing a series then you can take that series and put it in a playlist and now you have a playlist of these th these five you know parts of a series and you can start building a library that people can then use and then from that you can also strip out your audio and you can put that on a podcast and serve that out through say spotify or basically any any of the the podcasting uh, clients that are out there you can put it out there and then wherever people are amazon music spotify youtube google uh, apple podcasts any of these places they can partake of 
what you're putting out there on a weekly basis. And that's just with the live stream, right? We labeled like five different pieces of content coming from just one church service, right? Right. Yeah. Well, and it's like going, it's like if we go to the grocery store. So like there, there's a Kroger over by my house and same Kroger you shop at, Dave, you yes. know, and, and we walk in the door and I have a routine when I go grocery shopping. You may not have a routine. I don't know. But I follow him sometimes. Left, it's awesome. You should watch this. Go to the far left. He, he's shown up a few times while I'm grocery <laughs> shopping. It kind of creeps me out. Uh-huh. But, but it, you know, I get to see his daughter. So anyway, but we if you go all the way over to the far left, then you're going to hit the veggies and all that stuff. And, you, and I'm going to work my way through there. And I know as I come back over, you know, wh- which aisle has got the stuff that I need. And I work myself down. I don't go over and say, well, I need broccoli and get broccoli and then get say, well, you know, I need to get cheese. That's on the opposite side of the store, literally the exact opposite and go all the way over. And while I'm over there, go, oh, well, and I need asparagus. And I go back over to the veggie section to get asparagus. Now, I might forget sometimes, but in essence, when you go into the produce section, you try to buy the stuff you need for produce there. And it's the same thing we're talking about you're already there why not go ahead and pick up the grapes you wouldn't say well i'm going to pick up my vegetables now cheese next and then fruit after that well the veggies and fruit are right there next to each other and so in essence what you're doing is you're you're taking the work you're already doing you're already there and let's go ahead and use it completely instead of wasting our time bouncing around or get into the other side of the store and, oh i didn't you know i want to get the fruit but it's all the way over there so i'm just gonna leave you know yeah. and the fruit may be the podcast right so right. if we do it all in one place we capture it all then we have to do whatever we want to with it and we can use it you know in any way we want to and that's a good thing